All right, another thing when it comes to the idea, or not the idea, the IAs, is how to present your results. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of torn on this one. There's several ways to do it. Um, what I normally recommend students to do is give me a table of raw. So this would be my raw data. And then give me a table of calculated data. And the reason why I do that, here, look at that, I wrote raw off the board. The reason why I do that is because raw data is the data that's being collected, um, whatever I'm collecting my data, and the calculated data are things that I am, I am solving for. Um, things like average time, you know, or average time squared would be located in the calculated data, but my multiple time measurements may be located in my raw data. Um, the reason why I do that is because there's an additional step that comes with calculated data that does not come with the raw data. And to keep them separate forces you to realize that everything that is being represented in this calculated data table also has another step associated with it. So when I'm going through that process, anything that's listed up here has to have this other step where the raw data doesn't. Okay, now if your raw data is relatively small in size, what I also would recommend you do is you do this. So you can in fact do something like this as long as the appearance is relatively clean. You could come in and you can say, here is my raw data. Now let's write it off the board. Here is my raw data, whatever that may be. And then over here, is my calculated data and I would even I would even separate them where it says raw and calculated and then have my rows of my stuff here and then have my rows of my calculated data here um, just so that we're keeping those two separate okay um, the other thing is is that you could potentially change the color of the background of that data but be warned to do that with a very light color instead of something that is is dark and makes the data difficult to read. Um, but there ha I want you to create a clear delineation between what is raw and what is calculated. Now, I'm going to use the incline problem as my example because it's probably the best one for this. So I'm going to have over here, I'm going to have trial. And then I'm going to have run one, run two, run three, and then trial two, run one, run two, run three, because I'm gonna do this three times, I should do it more than three times, but I'm gonna do it that way, and I'm gonna, so that way, and I guess I should, should redo this a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Give me one second with that. Okay, so I would go trial, And then I would go run one, run two, run three. I would do up to run five, to be honest. I would, and then I would have trial again, and then run, run, run. Now do this so that I had five separate trials, maybe five runs per five trials. Okay, so then I would have time, and this is how this should be expressed. There are several ways to do this. I could say time and then seconds, okay? And often you'll see the seconds underneath the word time. And then if you can, give the plus or minus the uncertainty, if you can. You might not be able to, but that's what I would do, okay? If you can, if you can't, then put another column next to it that says uncertainty. But, I mean, I'm arguing that when we looked at the time trials that we could claim this, or we looked at the distance trials and we could claim this. Um, but, yeah, if you can make one claim for the uncertainty, go ahead and do that. Okay, the next thing is going to be, and for this one, there would actually be starting position and final position. And because the trials are all the same for the starting and the final, I'm going to say that that's going to be in meters and that's going to be plus or minus one centimeter. That's going to be in meters plus or minus one centimeter. 
And then it's all going to be one value, one value, the second value, the second value, the third value, the third value. Okay? When doing this, make sure that your uncertainty is reflected in your data. You cannot say if your time uncertainty is plus or minus one that your time is 53.2. Okay? Your time measurement is 53 if your uncertainty is plus or minus one. You're creating you're creating evidence that you don't have. Okay, which we all know is wrong. Your evidence says that I took 50, I got a measurement of 53. That extra 0.3 or 0.5 or point whatever it is is not actual data. It's not real because your uncertainty says that's not reliable at all. It's actually worse than reliable or unreliable. Okay? And then the same thing will go with your um, distance or your position data. Make sure that you're corresponding to whatever your uncertainty is. And the next thing is going to be in the calculated data. And once again, I'm going to use this incline problem um, as it. So I'm going to go average time because average time is a calculation. I'm going to show my value for average time, my value for average time, my value for average time. I'm going to give the, the uncertainty of that, plus or minus whatever. Okay, and I definitely have a better uncertainty for that one. I'm going to have distance or displacement, which would be fair. I'm going to have the unit associated with that. Oh, sorry, average time should have seconds. I'm going to have the unit, I'm going to have the uncertainty, and in this case, because they're both the same measurement, my uncertainty would just simply add together, which would be two centimeters. Okay. I'm going to have average time squared. That's another one. Um, once again, we're dealing with the, the, not the addition of two values. So average time squared is not going to be plus or minus one plus plus or minus two. Average time squared is average time times average time. So we're going to have to go through the process of calculating the percent uncertainty to get that average time squared. Okay, so all of those things are going to be in my calculated data. I'm going to make sure that they're presented in a different fashion because the next step I have to do underneath here is I'm going to say average time. And I am going to show how I calculated my first average time. And then I'm going to say distance, even though it is a stupid process. Distance is just simply the di is the difference from my final from my from my initial. I am going to show how I got that calculation. And then the same for average time squared. I'm going to show how I got that calculation for this first trial. If you do not do this, then you will lose a lot of points on your experiment. So make sure that anything that is calculated, including uncertainties, are shown in your and below your table um, as sample calculations. Cool?